easy. Turn on my scale. And I need 840 grams. I'm just going to go straight in there. We're going to do a double recipe. Then I've got 750 mils of water, my yeast, two and a half. So sprinkle that, spread it out. Boom, good. Okay, now I need one tablespoon of salt. I always use the iodized. You can use kosher. It's up to you. If you want a little bit saltier bread. I like salty and this tablespoon always works really well for me. Okay, now I've got all my dry ingredients. Before I add the water, I'm just gonna give these a quick stir. Just to mix in that yeast and that salt. The yeast is what's going to knead this bread for us. Get that gluten going. And then the salt is going to keep it from just going crazy and going out of control. That's all about. Oop. Oop. Okay, so just incorporate that a little bit. You don't have to get crazy. We're going to take our water and just add it right in the center. And then I like to go around the rim. It doesn't matter. Just add it. Super. Here's my favorite spatula to use for this. And then I just go around this really nice mixing bowl. It's easy to just spin it. And then it's going to go past that. And then it's going to get kind of stringy. And the only thing to avoid at this stage is at the very bottom, you have a tendency to get. Um, flour at the very bottom. So you get like this little wad of unmixed flour at the bottom. bottom. So this last thing I'm going to do is just mix that up, get all that stuff off the bottom, incorporate it, and I'll just come around, grab all those little parts, and just kind of use this spatula Form that into a little ball and remember that this is going to double in size so I'm anticipating a big rise out of this okay that's looking good two hours you're going to end up with something like this and this is the part where it's called punching punching back and to do this you're going to need some flour Take this, just cleaned off the countertop surface. I like to lightly flour that. It can also be really helpful to get a little sieve. And you can fill that up or just dip it straight into the bag and then use that to lightly flour the surface. Another thing that's really handy to have is the next part of the process is to punch it back or degas. And this stuff, it's it's a really hydrated dough, so it's gonna be super, super sticky. Can and you use your hands? And it's really puffy right now. And yeah, you can use your hands, but it's just gonna stick to everything. And so I just kind of mix it back down. And then, put that onto my floured surface. And then, flour the top of that. So the whole point is to sort of rework it and put the yeast in contact more food. And you can see how useful this scraper is right now. You can see how I'm folding it into kind of thirds. It's sticking right there so when it starts to stick, just add more flour. 
And so when I first started doing this, I would do like really, really minimal um, stretching and folding. And then I basically only just like fold it once. But it's best I think to do it a couple of times. So fold it over, fold it over. And you can feel as you stretch this out, you can feel those bubbles popping. That first prove is all about building up the gluten in the dough. And so now when we put this back in for the second prove, that, that gluten has formed in the dough and then the, the crumb structure of the bread, you're gonna get nice bubbles. Okay, so yeah, I folded that, what, three times? Is I mix a double batch. And once I get it to this point, then I'm gonna cut it in half. Right? And get back to a single batch amount. It's three and a half cups of flour. And then this is gonna be my Dutch oven loaf. And then this is gonna be eight buns. And so I've been playing around and experimenting and making like hot dog rolls. I cut this into 16 and had some really nice dinner rolls. So you see how I'm kind of folding that underneath itself? And I think it sort of helps it push up. I'm gonna go back to my original mixing bowl. And this is a trick to, for your second proof, you can use olive oil. So what's gonna happen is I'm gonna put this in to prove for the second time, and that's gonna double in size. And transferring a sticky hunk of dough into a 450 degree Dutch oven pot is really scary. So it, having this non-stick surface there um, really, really helps transferring this out of this container into the Dutch oven without burning or knocking a bunch of air out. I like to use these grocery bags I'm going to give that another hour and a half to prove for the second time. And so I'm going to wait an hour and then start my oven preheating. Give the oven about a half hour with the Dutch oven inside of the oven, right? So in an hour and a half at about five o'clock, this is going to be doubled in size. My oven's going to be at 450 degrees. My Dutch oven is going to be inside of there. That's also going to be 450 degrees. So when it's time to bake this thing, pull out the Dutch oven, set it on top, take the top off, pop that into the Dutch oven, put the lid on, put it back in the oven, give it 30 minutes. So, there's Duke, the puke. All right, so back to the rolls. Take these, and I'm just gonna take this and turn that into a circle. And then I'm going to cut that in half, cut that in half, cut that in half, that in half, that in half, that in half. Okay, so we're gonna use nonstick. there. Go real light on these cookie sheets. These aren't going to be preheated. And we're just going to prove right on top or right on these. Okay, so with these, it's this the same kind of move. It's kind of tricky getting you want to add flour, but not too much flour. So yeah, I'm just kind of taking these corners and rolling them under. Right. And then I like to kind of hold it and pinch it at the bottom like that. And what that does is it just gives you a really nice kind of attractive round thing. And as it proves, there's a little bit of tension underneath, so that it want to prove up instead of just sort of turning into a big blob. And as you roll this, it gets, it's 
sort of circulating that dough, and you'll get um, you'll be bringing the, the wet dough. Baker, bread maker was watching me do this, they would probably be screaming right now. But they've been getting better and better. The second proof um, is going to take anywhere from, it can take as little as 30 minutes. Um, I think the first batch I did, I preheated the oven and just left these and put it in. And they were still good. Uh, and even if you overproof it and bake it, the texture is weird and you get end up with a really flat bread, but they still taste great. So you really can't screw up the, the taste part. Got these little chunks of wood. Uh, and if you look in there, you can see anything. Leave some extra space in there. Because these things are gonna get left a little bit. Another cookie sheet. Lay that over the top, right? So I'm building a little tent for these. sticky mess and you're gonna screw up your buns. The, the dough will stick to it and once you you can get the towel off but you're stretching that dough and it'll knock a bunch of the air out and it'll kind of be really so 